Hey there, my name is McLean Wright. You might know me from some of my ski videos here in the Wasatch or some of my trail running videos. And today I'm gonna unpack my ski bag, show you what's in it, show you my favorite gear and uh, the setup that I'm using for this winter. Let's get into it. So last year uh, was our first winter in Utah and uh, it was super fun, kind of a dangerous snowpack at the beginning of the year, but things settled down and we got out on a lot of low angle stuff and as things got safer, started skiing more things. Uh, really excited for this year. I've already gotten about 10 days uh, out in the backcountry so far. Been able to use a lot of this gear that I got new for the season and I'm excited to, excited to show you it. The first thing I want to profile is this new boot that I got. It's really, really terrific. Uh, can't recommend it highly enough. Um, it's the Scarpa F1 LT. I think it weighs about a thousand grams. Um, it's super light. My old boots before were the Dinafit Radical boots. They were orange. They were pretty good, but I think they were almost twice as heavy. And um, getting the same performance, if not actually better performance from a boot that's half as light, that's a real win. Uh, one thing you'll notice like throughout this gear review is a lot of this gear, uh, probably like you <laughs> who's watching this, you've probably watched a lot of gear review videos on backcountry gear and uh, the stuff that I've accumulated is kind of watching other people's gear reviews and seeing what works for myself. So you'll see some things inspired by, you know, Cody Townsend or the mediocre amateur guys who live down there in Provo, uh, Kristoff and Danny. So uh, this was one thing that Kristoff reviewed and I went and uh, tried it out at Ski Moco down in uh, Sandy or Cottonwood Heights, somewhere down south, and uh, absolutely loved it. Couldn't recommend this highly enough. So this boot has like a removable power strap at the top that I took off. I think doing that saves you about 30 grams per boot. So it closes and opens with this mechanism. Uh, you can keep the Velcro on when you're skinning uphill. When you get to the top, you can just clamp this down. Instant tension. I've skied about 10 days on this boot this fall and I really never felt like I needed that power strap. Um, I guess you could have it, but it would just make transitions a little longer. It's got a pretty easy uh, lever mechanism here. Nothing really uh, revolutionary about this. A lot of boots have similar things. Uh, but what is revolutionary is this BOA technology. You save so much weight by having this uh, simple mechanism that pops out. So this is like totally loose and released. And then you press it in and then twist. And that adjusts the tightness. So there's no buckles. Um, you just tighten it up. Um, again, I've skied about 10 days on this so far. Um, I was a little skeptical at first. Uh, really, really enjoy it. If you've got any questions about the gear that I'm reviewing, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll get to it as soon as I can. Or you could follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. I'm probably checking those more often. Um, hit me up with any questions. Would love to answer them. Second thing I want to talk about today are my skis. Uh, these are my you know, daily driver skis. These are the Atomic Backland 107s. Uh, fairly wide ski, but you know, here in the Wasatch, we get blessed with a lot of powder. So, had this ski last year, absolutely loved it. Um, skied about, gosh, probably like 50 to 60 backcountry days on the skier, on the ski, really loved it. Um, it's great for powder. Love this, uh, this uh, rocker, I think it's called. Not a ski professional, but I think that's what it's called. It's really, really great. Pretty damp, even if it's like, you know, the snow condition's not the best. This year, upgraded the binding. This is the Atomic Backland Pure. Um, it's called like Pure because it doesn't have a break on it. That's why I've got the, the ski strap on it here. A um, couple things, like why I like it so much. There's a really, this kind of seems like a, a minor detail, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. This hole right here, or not a hole, this little depression, it's really big. You stick your ski pole in there, you can get out of walk mode. Uh, a lot of other bindings have a really small target there. Kind of hard to put your ski pole in. Small detail, but makes a big difference. Other than that, toe piece, pretty normal. This uh, heel piece, uh, if you're going on the uphill, you just flick this down, you get up to the top, flick it back up, step in. I hardly ever use the flat mode, so these 
Uh, bindings are really great for that. There's no brakes, so there's no added weight. Um, there's also no heel stomper. Um, so I guess, you know, it takes away a little bit from performance and if you're hucking huge cliffs, maybe you don't want to have this binding, but I think for 99% of uh, backcountry users out there, it's a really bomb proof binding. Like it's really great. There's two risers here if it's a deep day and you're breaking trail or if the trail is really steep. Uh, like I said, if you want to go to flat mode, you can rotate it. Rarely ever use that. Um, it's really great. Weighs about 288 grams per binding. Um, not all of you are gram counters out there, I'm sure, but my bindings before this were the Dinafit Rotation 12s, which were, again, like the boots, almost twice as heavy. So between the boots and the bindings, saved a ton of weight this year, and I'm like already seeing the difference. I mean, I'm just like flying up the skin track already. It's been a blast of a of a preseason, if you call it a preseason. So those are the two uh, new upgrades for the year. All right, working my way down the gear list. These are the Ski Trap Maestro poles. Um, I mean, a lot of my gear is, is, it might not be the perfect thing, but it's the, it's the item that checks the most boxes. So um, this pole just checks a lot of boxes. It's got a really nice grip. It's got a, a what do you call this? A hand strap, pole strap, I don't know. It's got a nice handle. It's kind of foamy. It's really light. It's incredibly light. It's got a three quarter basket for the uphill. Um, did I mention it was light? <laughs> it's super light. Uh, don't fall on it because you'll bend them. I've bent a pair, but if you don't fall on them, they're super light. Great pull. Um, I really like having the, the strap for the uphill. Um, helps with like some leverage and when I go downhill, I don't use the straps because that's a bit of a like dangerous thing to do on the downhill. You don't want your poles to be attached to in the case of avalanche. So I'll hold the straps down like that with my hand and not have it around my wrist. Um, really highly recommend these poles. I really like having lightweight gear, as I'm sure you can tell. Uh, it gives you a lot of the same performance and then you're just not hauling as, around as, as much like heavy items, heavy gear with you throughout the day and have more fun, have bigger days, do more vert. So, would recommend these. These are the Smith Wildcat sunglasses. If you want more information about them, I actually made a dedicated review about these, so that'll be linked down in the description. I love these sunglasses for touring. I mean, I don't even wear goggles anymore. I just wear these things, so check out that review down in the description. All right, let's move on to the backpack. Uh, love my backpack, bigger than most. It's a Nerona 45 liter backpack. A lot of people go for like around a 30 liter backpack. Um, I opted for something just a bit bigger because I'm often carrying a lot, around a lot of um, camera equipment with me, like GoPros, cameras, uh, extra batteries, the occasional drone uh, for some nice drone shots. Um, so I just opted for something a little bigger. That way you're not trying to stuff everything into a backpack. Before um, this backpack, I had the Black Diamond Dawn Patrol. I think that was 28 or 30 liters. It was a solid backpack, but um, I was always like stuffing things in, which I guess is fine, but um, it made getting, you know, uh, items at the bottom of your backpack kind of tough to get out without taking out your puffy and your shell and your thermos, you know. So just opted for something bigger. It's got two, uh, it's got a waist strap with two of these side pockets. Um, I like to keep a headlamp in there. Um, maybe some sunscreen. I like this sunscreen stick. I don't know why it says kids. I think it's for adults too. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of wax in here for those spring days when your skis or your skins get a little gloppy. Rub some wax on there, good tip. Um, everybody wants to know about this. Uh, when we're torn around Alta and Big Cottonwood, Little Cottonwood, etc. People stop us on the skin track all the time and ask about this water, water bottle holder um, with good reason. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of gear. Uh, it really like changed my life when I started using it. Uh, it's got this strap to keep your water bottle from flying out. Insulated water bottle so your water doesn't freeze. And then more insulation because this is like a I don't know, foil lined holder. Um, you can keep your water in front, so you're just drinking all day, staying hydrated. Um, I like to keep food in these little pouches here. 
uh, so I can like eat. You know, it's, it's good to have things in front of you easily to access. You can eat, um, stay hydrated without having to take your pack off and stop all the time. Um, so if you're interested in one of these, um, they're available all over the internet. Just search like Dinafit water bottle holder. Um, there'll be links for everything in the description too, but um, this gets the most questions out of anything. All right, another thing that I usually have on my pack, uh, I think it like, I don't know, it was in my bag, but I usually have my BCA radio uh, tucked in right here. Um, I like it, you know, it's, it's right here. Um, good communication, easy. A lot of things, if it's not right in front of you, you're not gonna use. If you're, if you're walkie-talkies in your backpack and you gotta dig it out when you're trying to talk to your, your touring partner, you're probably not gonna use it. If it's easily accessible, you're gonna use it. A uh, little bit of weight, but you're trading that weight for a really great communication tool. Um, on those low visibility days, or maybe it's windy, it's really loud, or you get separated from your partners on the way down, really, really great tool to have would recommend it. Uh, phones die, uh, walkie-talkies typically don't. So invest in a walkie-talkie. It's made a big difference. All right, continuing along here in the backpack. In the goggle pocket, I usually keep my camera for ease of use. Uh, right now I've got my gloves in here. These are the Black Diamond uh, Heavyweight Screen Tap Gloves. So all of the fingers on this glove you can use on your phone or a touch screen. That's really important because usually it's just here and here on most gloves, but you know, you pinch and zoom and then you use your thumb texting and it's really important to have like all your fingers uh, be able to use your phone. Um, love these gloves. They're pretty breathable, pretty warm as well. They've got the leather palm so they don't wear out. Just kind of simple and they work really well. On top of that, that's the other hand. On top of that, I'll put this Ski Trab um, Gara Overglove, got these a couple years ago. Um, they've held up really well. They're basically like a puffy for your hand. They've also got a slit here. You can take your fingers out like that. So it's really great for like beacon use or using your phone if you're using a map, um, taking photos, um, adjusting buckles. You know, it's really easy to take your fingers in and out. It's really great. These things are unbelievably warm, uh, especially for how lightweight they are. Another piece of gear that I just can't recommend enough. They're, they're like magic. They're great. All right, this, uh, this backpack's got a helmet carry system. I'm using the uh, Black Diamond uh, climbing helmet this year um, in an effort to save some weight. Um, yeah, another thing that's great about it, I'm gonna be doing some Dawn patrols this year. It's got like a headlamp um, holder, I guess you'd call it, um, and around in the back too. So there's four points of contact for your, for your headlamp uh, so it doesn't like come off, swing around. So that's what I'm using this year. Um, and then it, you know, just tucks right here and then this net tucks in there. So if you want to get rid of it, you can get rid of it. In the avalanche safety pocket, I've got my shovel, BCA shovel. Um, I don't know if there's anything super exciting about this, but it's like metal durable shovel. Um, just kind of like standard shovel. And then also probe, like pretty standard probe. This is the 280 size. Um, I don't know, nothing like super important to write home about the shovel and the probe, but it's great to have them, obviously. So in the main compartment here, I've got uh, my shell. This is just a Nerona lightweight shell. Pretty breathable, um, mostly just lightweight and wind resistant. Um, I think it's Gore-Tex as well if it's like raining or snowing. Hopefully it's not raining. Hopefully it's snowing. Um, works really great. Simple piece of gear. Works great. Um, this is a new thing I picked up this year. Really warm puffy. Um, my puffy that I was using before just wasn't cutting it. Um, and this one is orange so it looks better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's going to be warm and you never know when you'll need it. But when you need it, you'll be glad you have it. I also really like to keep extra water in like a soft um, bladder bottle like this. Uh, when you drink the water, you can collapse it down, doesn't take up too much space. You can see how much water you've, you've got left and you know you can pour it into this bottle.
bottle that I love so much, so easy way. So we just talked about uh, some of the Avalanche safety gear. This is my Beacon, it's the BCA Tracker 3. Another piece of gear that's kind of simple, but just does the trick and works pretty well. Uh, these are my pants. Uh, I think these are the Dinafit Mercury Pro 2 pants. I don't know why they make the name so complicated. I like them because they're kind of lightweight. They're uh, soft shell, so they fit pretty close to your body. Um, they've got multiple pockets. I, I'm, I like to keep the beacon in the, in the pocket. I'm a beacon in the pocket type guy. Um, use this arcade belt, pretty comfortable. Uh, pretty inexpensive, uh, better than suspenders. I had bib pants before, I just thought it got way too hot. So I was glad to just go with merino t-shirt and then uh, these pants, so I like that a lot. Pomoka Skins, they just came out with this new carrying case this year. So I don't know how long I'll use this for until I get tired of zipping them up in there. But these are the Free Pro 2.0s, um, pretty popular skin on the market. They have just enough sticky to um, keep them on your skin at all time, but not enough sticky to make taking it off annoying. Um, they're kind of the, the Goldilocks of skins, as I think it's been expressed elsewhere. Um, they're lightweight, they pack down really small. I recommend them to like pretty much everyone that's looking for skins. I mean, they're really great, unless there's like a, a custom skin for a really skinny ski, like a race ski or something. This is what you want to get. All right, we've just got stuff everywhere right now. Let me clear this off. What else is in here? Picked up this uh, outer shell on sale this uh, this fall. It's kind of for warmer days. Um, it's a lot uh, thinner than what I usually wear. This is the like I don't even know what it's called, but it's like a Nerona uh, mid layer. It's got these chest pockets. So I'll keep snacks or uh, a scraper for your bindings in here. Um, I like to keep my my phone in the other one, keep it against my body, keep it warm. Uh, super breathable, um, really, really breathable. I mean, I, I can't say that enough. That's kind of what you want in a, in a mid layer, something that's breathable so when you get sweaty on the skin track, um, you don't freeze on the, on the, up, I mean, on the downhill once you put your shell on. Uh, another simple piece of gear that does the trick. All right, the last couple pieces of gear that I want to show you are uh, this snow saw. Um, I had a black diamond snow saw last year. It was super heavy, and I just didn't bring it with me that much. I mean, we weren't really skiing avalanche terrain that much, so we weren't really trying to dig that many pits. But I just didn't really bring it with me that much because it was too heavy. So lightweight is always the way to go. Um, if you're in between two options, if it's light, you'll bring it. If it's like accessible, you'll bring it like the water and the walkie talkie. Um, you want to bring your gear with you. You don't want to be deciding whether or not to, to leave it at home. Um, that also brings me to these crampons, uh, pretty heavy. Um, I'm actually upgrading these to the Petzl Leopard uh, crampons, which use a rope system to attach them. Uh, way lighter, really excited to use those this spring. Well, that pretty much does it for this gear review video. If you've enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions about the gear, like I said, leave a comment down below. Um, or if you have any additions you think I'd like, leave a comment down below for that too. Um, you can also DM me on Instagram. Uh, I'll leave my handle down in the description. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. I uh, hope to see you out on the skin track if you're in Utah. And thanks for watching.